Welcome to a tutorial on digital electronics and in this tutorial I'm going to discuss about the master slave flip-flops okay so before the advent of the you know uh, the edge triggered flip-flops the master slave flip-flop was widely used in order to protect the output from sudden changes in the input all right so this problem has plagued the flip-flop community for a very long time and uh, probably the master slave configuration uh, I mean behind the development of the master slave configuration uh, the basic idea was that you can keep the outputs stable by introducing a known time delay denoted by TD equal to that of one clock pulse okay so if you would enter or anyone constructing a flip-flop circuit would you know uh, incorporate a delay time of about one clock pulse then in that case the flip-flop configuration would be stable to certain changes in the input okay that require time to stabilize so if these are the two SR flip-flop diagrams that I'm showing you over here okay so this is the Q and the Q bar all right and here's the clock okay and uh, on the other hand over here we have the Q1 and the Q1 bar okay so this is the S1 and S sorry R1 inputs and from the clock of this flip-flop we connect a NOT gate and take it to the clock over here for the next flip-flop so this is clock 2 and clock 1 in this case so this is flip-flop 1 and this is flip-flop 2 so basically what we see here is we can just see two SR flip-flops being connected this way so you'll probably might be wondering what am I doing or rather what is the meaning of all this okay so this thing that y'all are seeing right here okay the way that I have connected these two SR flip-flops right over here gives us the master slave configuration okay so this as you can see here is the master slave configuration of the flip-flops okay so therefore all master slave flip-flops have been you know obtained from the master slave SR flip-flop or rather derived from the master slave SR flip-flop that was first formed in somewhat this way okay so how is this master slave flip-flop superior okay all right I'll come to it with the help of an example let's say I give you the truth table over here okay so there you go Q1 and Q1 bar okay so let's say at the presence of the clock input we have s equal to 0 and r equal to 1 so let's say over here we have a 0 and a 1 at the presence of the clock input so let's say this clock is on for about a period of one second so now this input would cause you know an output over here at the flip-flop 1 as 0 and 1 which is the same uh, sort of output that we would have obtained for an SR flip-flop okay so now till the moment that there is the clock input I mean the clock input at uh, the uh, flip-flop 1 is at the logic 1 level the inputs are subjected to change which would affect the outputs as well so here if this flip-flop is connected in a circuit which you know suffers from the problem or rather in case of certain switching applications where uh, the switch uh, you know the switch signals I mean the signals coming from the switches you know uh, sometimes you know are subject to uh, sudden changes okay sudden unprecedented and you know changes over here due to certain fluctuations or certain faults so then this input over here during this uh, time when the clock is at logic one level would experience the changes and the outputs over here would change accordingly so in cases where the inputs you know take some time to stabilize okay the output also keeps on varying for that period of time till the moment the inputs remain you know uh, fluctuating okay so during the period when the clock signal is at the logic one level the output is subject to change under the change of the input signal okay so 
in this configuration what happens is that this configuration is basically designed to avoid the state or rather avoid the condition of logic race okay so when the input you know just is subject to you know rapid changes and the output is not I mean output is also changing accordingly that condition is termed as logic race condition okay so during this condition what happens is that if we just take these outputs as the ultimate ones then it will just be changing within the clock period so now as soon as the clock ends the clock one becomes inactive okay I mean the flip-flop one output is not subject to change anymore with changes occurring at its input terminal so now these outputs from flip-flop one travel into the input of the flip-flop two where they act as input signals okay and now here by connecting a NOT gate whenever the clock at flip-flop one falls from the logic one to the logic zero level it just goes to the NOT gate and appears at the clock two of flip-flop two as a logic one signal thereby activating its clock okay I mean the activating the clock of flip-flop two so during this case the inputs to this flip-flop being 0 and 1 at S1 and R1 respectively the outputs change to 0 and 1 respectively so what we have here is that during the second phase when the clock signal at flip-flop 1 comes to logic 0 level flip-flop 2 gets activated and over there since flip-flop 1 stores the final state of its output the inputs to flip-flop 2 is not subject to any kind of variation it remains constant and hence the output finally remains constant so this is basically the benefit of the master slave configuration where we can you know maintain the output state you know stable with respect even I mean even there are certain changes I mean un unprecedented and sudden changes in the input terminals okay so having said that if we just move on to the truth table again so we'll see that by applying certain input combinations over here we obtain the results at the output okay similar to that as we would see for a you know SR flip-flop so here by in this state there is no change okay so there is no change right here uh, all right and by putting logic one signals on both the S and R inputs here the Q and Q bar I mean they would just suffer the invalid state okay so they would enter the invalid state over here so there you go so this is the invalid state fine then so this is basically the uh, circuit diagram of a logic I mean master slave SR flip-flop so where this flip-flop one part is the master okay and flip-flop two acts as the slave the slave follows the master as the slave you know as you can see here outputs the same thing or rather takes an input the same thing as outputted by the master and you know outputs the same as what the master had when the clock signal just ended okay so the basic benefit is that it the output remains stable and subject to no sudden changes in the input okay so if I would just you know try and show you the logic diagram of the SR flip-flop I mean SR master slave flip-flop then it would look somewhat like this as you can see here okay this is a Q Q bar all right so this sign that's given over here this one represents the master slave flip-flops okay and if we just you know modify the master slave SR flip-flop okay let me just write it down so this is the master slave SR flip-flop okay so if I just you know modify this diagram into something like this okay so there's Q and Q bar okay it's a master slave configuration all right S and R here's the clock but if we just you know connect a NOT gate from the S input to the R input then it becomes a master slave D flip-flop so this is basically the master slave D flip-flop okay whose logic diagram can be finally given as something like this okay there's Q Q bar okay and the, here is the D input terminal with the clock 
all right so this is basically i mean this uh, modification over here is basically the same as you know connecting or rather i'd use a different color in this case like just by connecting a not gate right over here from the s input to the r input over here as you can see okay so there you go so this is how we would obtain or rather i, I mean this thing is, i think is not visible much so yeah that's the modification i was talking about so having said that if we just you know quickly move on to the truth table of the d flip-flop it would look something like this so here it is the d input the clock input and the q and q bar inputs okay so when we have a zero at d input under the presence of the clock signal q is set to zero q bar is set to one and at you know logic one input at the d input terminal under the presence of the clock we have a logic one signal at q and zero at q bar respectively okay so having said that i would just finally come on to the most popularly used master slave flip-flop that's the master slave jk flip-flop okay so here we go the master slave jk flip-flop okay so here would be the circuit diagram of the master slave jk flip-flop i think you're probably you know curious to see this okay so there we go so here are the feedback paths okay of this flip-flop and there's two more NAND gates as you can see okay so they just go into the input or rather connect to the output of two more NAND gates right over here and they also go and connect to the inputs of two more NAND gates right over here okay and here we have a clock input of the second flip-flop so this is flip-flop 2 okay and here or rather i would not call it flip-flop too because that would be you know highly inaccurate okay and here we would have another as you see feedback path to these terminals and over here we would have the preset and the clear terminals or rather the clear inputs okay and then finally from these two terminals we would have special input terminals okay I mean carrying the Q and Q bar stages okay coming into and falling into the first gate which receives the inputs that is here we have the inputs J and K okay and now over here this is the common terminal connecting these two gates okay where we apply the clock all right so this is basically the circuit of a jk flip-flop in the master slave configuration so this is basically the master slave jk flip-flop okay master slave configuration where you can see in this circuit that we have two more inputs as you can see the preset and the clear it's given because whenever a flip-flop is applied power to okay there is no guarantee as to what state it would you know result in at the outputs okay it may stay at any state possible so in order to set the flip-flop to the logic one state or yeah logic in order to set the output of the flip-flop to logic one state we use the preset input okay we apply a logic zero uh, signal over here in order to set the flip-flop uh, output state at logic one and if we are going to give okay a clear over here okay this is also a active low say input signal so if we are going to apply a logic zero signal at clear then we're going to set the flip-flop output to logic zero okay so that's our description as to which state we want to set the flip-flop to okay so having said that I would just give you the uh, JK flip-flops you know um, truth table okay so here you go so whenever we have the clock okay so J is 1 K is 0 we have this sort of results right over here as you all can see under the presence of the clock in all the conditions okay and finally when we have both ones on it this thing just toggles okay so as you can see it'll change again so there it is the toggle state so basically with that we come almost to the end of our tutorial where i just want to show you the 
logic diagram of the JK master slave flip flop. Okay, denoted somewhat in this fashion. All right, that's the JK flip flop with the clock. So this is basically the logic diagram of the master slave JK flip flop. Okay, and with that we come to the end of our discussion in this tutorial on the master slave flip flop configurations and the various types of master slave flip flops as you can see so kindly check out our next tutorial on digital electronics and till then it's just goodbye for now and thank you